Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be about PCQ school and how good do you actually have to be to go to Q school. So the PDC today released information about Q school and how to enter it and things like that. But a question that I get asked quite a lot is how good do you actually have to be be able to get a tour card or to be in contention with getting a tour card what sort of things do you have to be averaging at your local league to be able to really give it a go because it's not cheap to do so in this video we're going to be working out how much exactly we need to be averaging in our local league darts to really stand a chance with getting a tour card so the amount that you need to be averaging in your local league darts to stand a chance of getting a tour card is 25 to 26. Now, give me a chance, don't close the video, don't leave a dislike, and don't comment saying I'm wrong, because I've got some theories behind this, and I'm gonna try and share these with you as best as I can. So my first reasoning is to do with the venue. So if you can throw a running 25 or 26 average throughout your whole Super League, playing in venues where the boards aren't correct, or the hockey is too long, or the hockey is too short, or there's too much background noise, or anything like that, the setup just isn't very good, or it's the other side of the county and you've got work in the morning, then trust me, you're going to be able to throw a much higher average when it comes to going to Q school. Because everything is perfect if you if you've ever been to a pdc event you'll know how good the boards are and the the boards are the perfect height the boards are the perfect length the boards are really well like positioned and surrounded um there's so much less noise at pdc events as well if you've ever been been to one you'd know and uh yeah so your game is going to improve massively when you get to a pdc event in comparison to what you've been playing on on a, on a Super League night or on a county night. So the question is, how much roughly are you going to improve by? If we have a look at the screen, I have picked a list of players here who uh, play in the Suffolk Super League, which is the Super League that I'm involved in. Uh, and they also play some sort of PDC events. So they either play on the Pro Tour, the Challenge Tour, or the Development Tour. So I've got their names, the teams they play for, how well they've got on, um, their, their, their one dot average for the for the Super League, their three dot average from the Super League, and their current PDC average from the from the uh, from the finishing off uh, season of Super, of uh, PDC. So I've managed to get the PDC averages for all these players from the Dark Connect website. Uh, if you go on the leaderboards, it will show you sort of like how your friends are getting on and stuff if, if they played on PDC events. But that's where I'm getting the information from, and let's have a look. So if we start off with Ryan Meikle, um, the difference between his PDC average and his Super League average is 7.32. And next is Steve Burton, 10.87. Um, Curtis Hammond, nearly 6. Henry Cutton, nearly 3. Ashley Coleman, over 10. Andrew Gilding is like 14, so that's a big jump. And then uh, Thomas King, uh, nearly 5. So the average improvement for these players, and I guess I understand it's a very small pool, is, um, is 8.4. But one thing you'll notice is everyone's pdc average is greater than their super league average which backs up my point quite a bit so the next thing to do is to have a look at how last year's qualifiers got on so there were 19 qualifiers last year through q school and these are the averages that they threw throughout the four days or however many days they were playing in it so at the top of the list is jamie hughes who had a 98 29 and at the bottom of the list is jonathan worsley who had an 83 63. so that means that you can get through Q school and get a tour card by averaging 83 and a half. It is possible. It can be done and it has been done. So if you were to say that the average improvement of your game is about eight points per three darts, then if you were averaging 25 to 26 and you add eight to that, you would get 83, 84. And we've already discussed that an 83 or an 84 average, because there's a couple of them here, um, is good enough to get you get you through Q school and to have a tour card. So the maths is there. It is clearly possible for you to average 25 to 26 in your like local Super League um, and still manage to get a tour card out of Q school. Obviously, this is the low the low end of of how good you need to be to actually stand a chance. Um, if you're averaging 30 in your Super League and you go to Q School, odds are you're probably going to get a tour card. You're probably going to be good enough and you'll probably get through. But there are going to be situations where players like Jonathan Worsley, who's only averaging 83 and a half, manage to get a tour card. And that basically is just down to luck. 
you know, you might get some really, really nice draws, or you might win games that maybe you didn't deserve to win, or people might miss doubles against you. It is such a lottery playing in Q School. Glenn Durrant almost didn't qualify last last year. He was he had match starts to beat him, um, and he wouldn't have got a tour card, which is insane to think considering how well he's done since then in the PDC. So, thanks for watching the video guys, hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you've got an idea as to how well you have to be playing reasonably um, to have a chance of getting a, a, a tour card at Q School. If you like the video, please leave a like on it, and please consider subscribing as well, because it means a lot to me. But, thanks for watching the video guys, and I'll see you later.